We are here at the Audioholic Smart House, boots on the ground. We're in the theater room. We're going to be talking about screen innovations, acoustically transparent screen, the Zero Edge Pro. We got Don Dunn from Haven Smart. What's up, everybody? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with Audio Hawks. We got Don back here. We're going to be talking about screens. This is a topic that's not often covered on YouTube from audio channels. Something that should be covered more in depth, I think. Oh, absolutely. Don's, this is Don's area of expertise. As you guys know, he's with Haven Smart. He does really high end, very high profile clients, custom install, upscale theaters. You have a lot of experience with Screen Innovation. Well, Screen Innovation is a dynamic company. Um, from the beginning, they've been innovators in the screen market, and they make a multitude of products. Um, they make a, a lot of various different kinds of fixed screens and different configurations and different kinds of material. Um, one great thing about Screen Innovations um, is they pioneered the use of um, the ambient light reflecting screen technology, which really in our industry has been a game changer. What that does is it allows light to enter from the front where the projector is, but then reflects light that comes in from different angles. And what that means in English is that you can have a projection screen mounted in a family room or a media room, an environment where there's more light than you would traditionally be able to use a projector in and have a great um, picture quality in it. It really works well. And now several other companies have kind of jumped on board. Um, it, it's opened a lot of doors for us. Also, Screen Innovation makes um, motorized roller screens for windows like you use. And now they also make um, outdoor screens like with mosquito netting or various different configurations on that. <clears throat> Another cool, really cool product that Screen Innovations makes that we've used on award-winning jobs that we've done is they make a, a, what they call a zero G, which is basically a housing that sits flush in a ceiling um, and a motorized doors open when deployed and a bar drops with two really small strings on it. And it uses um, a material built by DuPont, which is extremely strong. It'll open up that bar will drop, drop down a certain distance with these two strings, which are almost invisible. Then the actual screen itself drops out of that bar, basically giving the illusion that the screen is free floating. Okay. It's really designed to be used in front of windows or areas. You can even change that string color to match the background to help it disappear. So a lot of really innovative products um, are used by Screen Innovation. So they're kind of our go-to projection screen, although we, we have others like Seymour, which we just signed up as a dealer. Fantastic product. Um, we've used Daylight. I mean, I've used Stewart over the years. There's a lot of really great manufacturers out there. We just happen to like the Screen in, um, Innovations product. Now, this is their uh, um, Zero... What's that? Unity. Unity AT. Unity AT. <laughs> so this uses a vinyl material that's peripherated um, so you can mount your speakers in behind it and play into the room. Now, there's a couple different kinds of screens in this, this genre. There's a woven screen and there's vinyl peripherated. Um, the woven being the maestro. Being the maestro material yeah. that they have. Or, you know, companies like Seymour and Severson are big pioneers with that as well. Um, there's pluses and minuses, although that gap's really changed. In years past, I think the uh, woven screens didn't have quite a, a snappy or bright a picture as that you would get from the vinyl screens. But some of the screens I've seen over the last few years at trade shows um, have just been absolutely fantastic. But Screen, uh, screen Innovations has got you because they actually make both kinds of screen material for your application. Now, this was a, a, a Unity, which is, which is a kind of a matte white. Um, what's a 1.2 gain on this? It's like a 1.1, probably closer to 1 because I don't think, I don't, when they tell you it's 1.1 mm -hmm. and it's perforated like that, I think you do lose a little bit of the maybe, light. Maybe a little bit. A little bit. But here's the thing. So you got really three screen options with uh, Screen Innovations. You've got the black diamond, which is the ambient light reflection. Ambient light reflection. Mm -hmm. So that's great for like short throw projectors mm -hmm. or if you're in a family or a multi-purpose room and you've got a lot of light. Mm -hmm. But in this room, it's light controlled. I've got dark ceilings. I got my windows smoked out. I could pretty much have pitch black in here. So we didn't go with an ambient light reflecting screen. We went with the vinyl screen. And honestly, there's trying to figure out if you want a vinyl or a fabric. 
that's a topic for another video I'd probably get into sure. on its own, but I want to tell you my personal experiences here in this room. First of all, Don, mm -hmm. Don was right. I was going to go with a 140-inch <laughs> screen. He talked. 130. 130? Yeah, 130. He's like, you got to go big <clears throat> or go home. And you know what? I was doing my little calculations with the THX recommendations of throw distance versus where you're sitting and how oh, wide joy. the screen. It doesn't matter anymore. Everybody wants bigger. We're used to bigger. Mm. Do you remember when a 65-inch TV was grandiose? Now I've got a 65-inch TV in my bedroom. I got an 85 in my family room. Our oh, yeah. whole perception has changed, right? Well, there was always this formula created, and there's a little bit of truth to it still. But so resolution is so much higher now yeah. on both um, LEDs. OLEDs and, and also projection systems that you can set closer without necessarily having and seeing the detail. Yeah, yeah, screen door effect. So I don't really so much follow those anymore. I mean, I use the formula. I want to make sure that I've got good the biggest, angle. good viewing angle, but really as big a screen as possible because in all my 30 plus years of doing this, I've never had anybody come back and go, you know, I wish we had done a smaller screen. Never. <laughs> and that goes through with TVs all the time in family rooms. Husband, wife, husband wants an 85, wife wants a 55. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then they compromise. I'll get that call. Hey, you think we could trade that TV in and get that bigger one? I mean, all the time. Yeah. So I, I want a gene to have, I know his uh, wife had some concerns about being dizzy and whatnot, but you haven't had any of that, have you? No, she's been really good with that. And she sits in the front row because that's where our mm -hmm. money seats are. But let me tell you the immersion you get from a large screen like this, a 16 by nine I went with, because most of the content we watch is in 16 nine. A lot so of it, yeah. I really enjoy the immersive effect in here. When I watch mm -hmm. the series Andor, I'm like transported into a whole different world as long as I don't fall asleep, right? Because the first three, <laughs> the first three or four, a little, little slow, were, to, little it was slow a burn. slow burn, but it's slow a great burn. show. Yeah. But enjoying that kind of stuff, I really love that. Um, the the aesthetic of the screen. Let me tell you, it's one of the best built screens that I've seen. I love the red edge all around. It's like it, a the Ferrari of screens. It's a really, it's a really well built. And, and the, you know, the zero edge means it's all that aluminum, it, extruded aluminum. Yeah, aluminum, 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 aluminum. 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 <laughs> to, to our British fans. Um, so it, it's a great screen. It's well built. Um, you know, obviously the video is, is part of the audio. I mean, it's you can't have one without the other it, well, as far as, you know, movies and TV shows. So. And I'll tell you this, this, the build quality is incredible on the screen. I love the backlight. It, it, it integrates with the Philips Hue bridge. Mm -hmm. And I could control that from my phone. I could change the color. Right now, I have it on blue because blue is with the, your control force. Blue system. is the mm -hmm. posh for audio, right? Blue. But if I'm listening to like King Crimson Red, the album Red, I'll go and throw the screen on red, and I'll just sit back here, maybe do a little edible, <laughs> and <Aren't you? laughs> just be in a different planet, man. Because yeah. the, it really the visual mm -hmm. of it. I listen to Apple Music and seeing this, the words on the screen so big like that. It just, it blows your mind how awesome of an experience that is. But I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience with this screen material versus potentially other screen materials mm -hmm. we're going to be checking out. Because Don, as you know, this room is a change in progress. I'm always changing gear. Well, out. that's the whole purpose of the Audioholic Smart Home is to have a test bed. Mm -hmm. um, what we put in is not necessarily what's going to stay there. We, you know, we pulled stuff out and put it back in. Yeah. There's some There's some permanent things to have here, but... Um, the whole idea is to have a test bed and we want to bring some more. We don't want to be a video review company, but we p bring in people like Jason Dustel, some experts on it and just touch on it because it, it really goes hand in hand with the audio. And these screens are kind of part of the whole audio system because the speakers play from yeah. behind it forward. So, I mean, there's some some things that you, you should probably touch on. Well, there's challenges. Okay, so you've probably heard people say that the ultimate experience is to put the center channel behind the screen because you don't want to use a horizontal uh, center channel below the screen because, if you first of all, it's not at the same listening plane as your main speakers, and if you get off axis too far, especially with an MTM more than mm -hmm. 20 degrees, you get lobing, you don't get clear dialogue. So getting that center channel at the same height vertically oriented with the left and right speakers gives you an incredibly good panning from left center to right. It's very seam coherent, seamless. Yeah. It's very coherent, clear dialogue, lots of advantages, but there are some issues you have to be concerned with. Number one is if you look at the spec sheet from Screen Innovations, they tell you vinyl screens have more audio loss than, than uh, fabric screens. And they give you the loss uh, factor based on how far the screen is from the speaker. And they mm -hmm. recommend at least six inches. The further you could get the speaker from the screen actually is better. So if you could go to nine or 10 inches, if it's practical. 
I couldn't do it. What I did was I framed this in with two by fours. I got about f almost four inches because a two by four roughly. is two by four is three. <laughs> well, and we went inches, back and right? added those two to, to try we to did. bring it out a little bit. So what I did was I put, I framed this whole thing in. I put absorption material behind the screen so it acts like a mid base trap. It's an awesome benefit. Really tightens the stereo image. I can't believe the difference it made when we put the acoustic uh, panels behind the screen. Then we put the center channel there. Now I measured, you know, Screen Innovations claims that the screen material has about 6 dB loss at 20 kilohertz. The roll off starts at around two kilohertz, but they don't factor in the mesh. They give you a really thick black mesh. That adds another three or four dB of loss from my measurements. Kind of prevent any light from- Exactly, yeah, especially bit. if you have drivers that are not anodized black. So all in all, I measure almost 10 to 12 dB of loss. So you, if you're gonna use this screen, you better make sure you have a speaker that has a lot of dynamic range because you're gonna have to boost that treble to compensate for the loss. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that. If you're an audiophile and you really care more about audio than video, definitely go with a fabric screen. There's way less loss with a fabric screen, which we're gonna be measuring and we're gonna be reviewing. You're gonna see the difference here. But anyways, my speakers, the RBH Sound SVTRS Active System has plenty of dynamic range. I've got FIR room correction in here. I could boost the treble without compressing the tweeter. That AMT tweeter can handle like almost 115, 120 yeah, it's dB. Pretty powerful. It's similar to a horn and an output, but yeah. without some of the- Without the harshness. A little, yeah, some of the things associated with that. So that's the one thing about the uh, vinyl screen that's a disadvantage to fabric. Now in my room, um, theoretically, vinyl screens are supposed to have better video. You could get up to 8K resolution with the vinyl screen, whereas the fabric screens are only good to 4K. But what I noticed with my projector, I don't have a high-end projector. I don't have a $30,000 Sony like this guy installs like it's like it's waffles. Yeah. I mean, he's throwing them into theaters. I don't have one either, so. <laughs> Put you back. I'm using the very humble Epson 6050 UB. Now, it's a pixel-shifting projector, and I do plan mm -hmm. on eventually upgrading maybe to the laser projector. But I think because of the pixel shift technology, I sometimes get a moire effect on this screen, on a vinyl screen that you wouldn't get with a mesh screen or a, or a uh, fabric screen. And it's noticeable if I'm using test patterns or if, if I'm watching a scene that has all blue sky, it kind of looks, you see that moire pattern, it's almost like a dirty screen door look. I'm not a video file, but once I see something like that, it kind of detracts from my viewing uh, enjoyment. But I would say 90% of the time I didn't see it. It's just very specific cases that I see it. So I do recommend if you're using a, a less than high-end um, projector and you're using something that uses the pixel shifting, you probably want to look at a fabric screen. They have the Maestro uh, mm -hmm. screen material, which would work great, better for audio. So that's another <clears throat> option for you. Don, what would your experience be? Because you've installed this screen. You've actually installed a 200-inch version. Yeah, I think great. this goes to 220 <clears throat> inches. You installed a 200 inch mm -hmm. version with a high end Sony mm -hmm. projector in a very upscale house in Tampa. Mm -hmm. What was the video experience with that? I mean, it looked like a TV. So it was, it was fantastic. We, um, we did one of the big, big, big boy Sony laser projectors on this massive 200 inch diagonal screen is massive. Yeah. I mean, 150 is big enough, but two, 200 is massive. And, and I gotta say, as long as we had the right uh, NZ Lumen output, um, I mean, it was, it was just wonderful. It, it's, it's kind of a go-to screen. So as technology progresses in the years past, I think the woven screens, to be honest with you, have really caught up or real close on the video quality. I was a little prejudiced towards them just because of some experiences in past years, but you know, companies like Seymour and, and Severson have, have, you know, and, and also Screen Innovations with theirs yeah. really changed my mind on that because it is, it's, it's, it's more a better screen for audio. It's a better screen for the output of audio. So I think, you're gonna see more and more in trend to that. Um, these, as a rule though, the vinyl screens just give you more pop. And, and a lot of times with our clients, we have to find balances as we've talked about a lot mm -hmm. before. Do you want the ultimate auto audio or do you want the you know ultimate video? Or do you want just kind of a compromise in both? And more often than not, people are so hyper concerned with the video, believe it or not, which yeah. is crazy. Um, We're visual this, people. Yeah, it's kind of been a go-to and I'm sure I'll still use these screens. Um, but I think we should maybe at some point, you know, move some stuff around and try some different types of screen in here so we can kind of give our opinion back to all the people that follow an audioholics. Yeah. Look, the bottom line is screen innovation makes a really high end, very high build quality, beautifully aesthetic screen. 
and they've got different screen material options mm -hmm. that'll fit your needs. So you need to work with your professional integrator or whoever's helping you with your home theater to determine mm -hmm. what screen material, what gain you need, the projector you're using, it all matters. The light control, whether you have light control or not in the room, all that stuff matters. There's science to getting the best video and, possible. And Screen Innovations, which is the name innovation, part of it's great. They have some fantastically cool solutions for motorized screens, things that drop down, like that zero G. Mm -hmm. I mean, that zero G is this, it's the coolest thing ever to see a trap door open up and a tube float down in your room and a screen drop out of it. So they're kind of our go-to screen company. Um, we do have some other brands that we use that are fantastic as well. But oh, oh, on the whole, overall, Screen Innovations is, is a fabulous company to deal with. They're growing like crazy. They're coming out with all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, literally, you could do your film screen with them. You could put motorized shades and blinds in your theater room or in the rest of your house. You could go outside and have a mosquito screen that rolls down and locks in. So Doesn't NASA use their <clears throat> screens or something? NASA actually use their screens on, on the space station. So... I mean, pretty pretty cool company to deal with. And, you know, I give them 100% recommendation on their products. Awesome. Well, Don, I appreciate you dropping the knowledge here about these screens. We're going to be doing more coverage of this stuff. We'll talk to you guys about how to get the best audio out of it because I'm mm -hmm. telling you, this is the best way to retreat and acoustically treat your room without seeing With the towers, too, which is cool. Yeah. It's a, you don't, have, a hybrid to, you don't have to put all three of your speakers exactly. Yeah, Most of I'm, what we do. Because I'm a two-channel nut, so I would like to have the box speakers out in the room. Yeah. That's just my preference. You don't have to do it, that. It's a good compromise, though, Gene. I, I really like that you know exposed towers, center channel behind it. Yeah. Don't really necessarily want to put your subs back there unless that's the only choice you have, which more often than not, that it is. But yeah. if you do put your subs back and you build a baffle wall for your screen, make sure you try to... Put those subs down on the floor if you can do yeah, that. Yeah, not into a big cavity because that just messes the acoustics mm -hmm. up. But that's a topic for another video. Well, guys, I hope you like this video. Please share it. Please get the thumb up. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. Or dance lessons. <laughs> yeah, get them from him. He's the master. <laughs> right. All right. Well, until next time, my friends, keep listening. Keep listening. Can rock that one take, motherfucker. Yeah, thought it was good. I thought we were recording. It's gotta Lights hit. on. It's got to hit the vape pen before we start. Ready? Yeah, you ready? Mm -hmm. Jazz hands. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Ready to start? Mm -hmm.